Um, LeBron's uh, teammate, I can't think of his name right now. Thank you. He makes the outlet pass. Mark. Kevin, Kevin Love. Love. Kevin Job. Love. Thank, Thank you, Brett. Taylor. Good job, Brett. Brett's a good golfer. And uh, it's, it's an amazing pass because it, if you can do it, it, <coughs> it outruns the defense. So, <coughs> awesome. Wes Unseld was a bad man. Yes, he was. Um, Access 360, Rob. You going to fake out James like you did earlier? No, no, no. to go to the wall you can, only do that. you can only do that once. Okay. You can only do that once. What are you, so. what are you breaking out? A little LBJAD? You know, a little, a little vets, a little veteranism right here in this, mm -hmm. in this one. Do you need water? Sorry. Yeah, no, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, people at home. Here you got LeBron with a hot pick and roll from Gasol right here. He's trying to navigate what he wants to do. Right here, this is a big fight. That is a wall he has to get through. So now LeBron's anticipating. What are you going to do? I got you on my back. I'm going to go the whole spin. Do a little drop step. Fade back over the top. Because you're not big and mobile enough to stick with me. He got a little penetration. Kuz getting it back up top of LeBron. LeBron's seeing 80 there. You know what this thing? He should have ball fake, pump fake, but no. He was lucky he got the ball back. Then he used his skill set to penetrate. They draw the defense. One, two, three defenders round. Dump it off to AD. AD gets the easiest, second easiest bucket of the night for him. Right here, another situation where, you know what? I'm going to post a little fella. I'm going to welcome you to the big show right here. And look, you got the guys that defense is going to collapse. You don't want to collapse. I'm going to do my patented fadeaway over the right shoulder we here. call that mouse in the house? Mouse in the house of barbecue chicken. Right here, you see LeBron, he knows that he has a hockey assist right here. He tries to get it in the AD, AD gets it. Kuz breaks, takes defense with him. You know what? You're too little. You're too little. You might have played good defense in the playoffs. Not. It's a good cut by Kuz. Yeah, it's a great Kuz, but. Take the defender with you. Yeah, but you know, that, that's just, one you know, on those guys are warming up, and these are great expectations that happen coming soon. Yeah, I just like again. I like the spacing, and you know, guys are disciplined. They're not. They're not closing in. That's why they're able to drive, kick out the Coos, kick out the Matthews. Uh, Marcus all hit a three, and then when they penetrate, they get the they get the layups too. So, uh, discipline. They're, they they they're showing some good discipline early. Back to Phoenix. Kyle Kuzma speaking with the media. <laughs> I just enjoy some of those moments sometimes. Hey, Kuz, uh, you had the three ball working tonight, and particularly in transition. It seems like that's a, a shot that you were almost hunting or certainly feeling comfortable in. Uh, talk us through the the brief seven week off season, and, and if the you know the three point shot is something that you paid particular attention to in uh, improving your game. Uh, yeah, I just I just got up a lot of threes. Uh, during the short off season, um, you know, just trying to figure out my role. <clears throat> and one thing that I could add, um, you know, that Frank said in my exit meeting was being able to shoot off the move. And, um, you know, for me, I'm just trying to hunt shots. Anytime I'm up, I got an open look, I'm shooting confidently. Go on. Hey, Kyle. Uh, similarly, you know, this was an, an untraditional offseason, but then, you know, go back another summer and you played with Team USA and had got injured. You just haven't had a traditional full offseason in several years. Um, what has been the challenge of trying to um, build your game, you know, kind of naturally, organically as your career has progressed when you just haven't had full traditional offseasons? And, and how have you tried to um, manipulate that? Um, I don't think it's necessarily that. It's just me, uh, you know. Um, I mean, obviously, I have a real part, but I just think, uh, you know, in my career, my role has, has changed like kind of every year. So for me, I've had to uh, adapt my game and figure out ways to affect the game in uh, in different ways, um, much more than you know other guys on that trajectory. So for me. Um, just watching film and realizing um, what added parts we have and trying to just shape myself into it um, to become a winner. And, um, you know, that's how I really approach off seasons um, every, every season. Kagum. Hey, Kyle. So we've seen you talking to a, a lot of the new guys, um, you know, after plays or during dead balls. Um, is that, you kind of 
trying to, to, to blend them into how this team plays and what has that been like being a guy who can, um, um, you know, sort of, sort of be an explainer and be a teacher for uh, some of the guys who have joined this team? Um, you know, I, I just learned a lot during the playoffs uh, about myself um, and just about the game of basketball. So, um, you know, just coming in, being confident in what I'm doing. And um, also, you, know, you can't really say things to people if you're not, you know, doing what you're supposed to do. So I'm kind of just, um, you know, just leading. You know, coach always says every, every one of us are our leaders. Um, man, you know, I just I see something, I just try to point it out. And when someone sees something I'm doing wrong, they point it out. We hold everyone accountable. That's that's our, our championship culture. Last question, Dan White. Hey, Coos, you guys have been at this for a couple of weeks now. Um, do you have a sense for what your role could be on this team? Obviously, you've started all three of these games. Do you, do you know yet, or is this going to be another year of adapting? I have no idea. We'll see. All right. Thank you, Kyle, for your time. I have to ask you about Jared Dudley's threes. That seems to be the thing that gets the bench the most excited. Uh, yeah, anytime we can get Duds on the court and he gets a couple buckets or his patent three uh, celebrations, we all love it. Uh, we love Duds. You know, Bill and Stu were just talking Kuz, on the broadcast about the chemistry with this team that's carried over from last season. Uh, what have you made of that? How do you guys all get along and how do the new additions impact that? Um, you know, we just we're just brothers. Obviously, you know, we had to bubble to get really, really close. But uh, even before the, hi the hiatus, we were, you know, practically hanging out with everybody in every, every city and uh, doing everything like that. So with the new guys coming in, um, it's kind of, it's not like a fall in line thing, but like we, we invited it. All right, you're averaging about 25 these last two games. You start tonight, you've hit four threes in each of these last two. Uh, how are you feeling rhythm wise? And how was that built for you at the shortened off season since you guys of course won the title in October? Um, I, I just worked hard during the, the short off season, and it's, uh, you know, I'm just a little ahead of the curve. So what do you expect from yourself for this season, Coos? Uh, some minutes perhaps available at the 2-3 almost with Danny going out. We saw you in that role tonight. Uh, how are you feeling about where that might best optimize the way that you can play? Uh, I'm not really sure. Um, you know, it's just so much going on. Uh, we got a lot of great players, great team. So uh, we'll see what Frank does. All right, Kuz, I appreciate the time, huh? Yep, no problem. All right, uh, Braz is here. Before we get into AD and LeBron, which was the big story, this is their first preseason action, the first time they've been on the court since the Lakers won the title back on October 11th. I want to talk Kyle Kuzma. Um, Kuz, we've talked about it many times on the show, a lot of expectations. Uh, him being the one left over, uh, the guy right. that remained when the young core was traded, <clears throat> excuse me, for Anthony Davis. Um, found his role last year, kind of coming in and out of it, um, learning how to impact the team when you don't get 18 to 20 shots a game. But he worked hard this offseason, James, and it shows. You heard the numbers. He's averaging 22 in the preseason. He's 10 of 21 from three in the preseason. But, James, more than that, his decision-making yeah. has been outstanding. Yeah, after you go through what Kuz has gone through, came in very promising, very talented, then, the, then he, you know, had a couple of injuries he had to overcome, came back into the flow when AD and still a little frustrated, uh, didn't feel like he was getting the, the minutes or the shots. But then he be became quiet and methodical and started to just understand that this is a short, uh, not a short game, but it's, it's a long haul. It's a long career. And right now, his understanding of where he is and what he has to do is, is perfect. Uh, he's productive. He's, he's playing his role, whatever needs to be done, whatever is asked of him. And that's what good role players do. And I think he's, he's, living, up to the, he's living up to it. You know, it's, it's a lot of times... And you step into a season with great expectations. Last season, think about it. We put a lot of pressure on Kuz. Uh, they was like, oh, the third score, Kuz. 
This is going to be the man, Kuz. Think about that. That's a lot of pressure. And then you're trying to step up to the plate and be all these things people want you to be and not understanding who you're playing with. You know, AD and LeBron, you have to get in where you fit in, so to say. And I think it was hard for him to adjust. And I think little by little, he's adjusting. I know it's the preseason. We haven't seen him in there with a lot of minutes with AD and LeBron. I just